All right, welcome everybody to the Tuesday, April 19th meeting of the Conway Select Board. And at 6.15, it will be the joint meeting of the Conway Select Board and the Finance Committee. I call the meeting to order. Um, we can take the agenda out of order since we have Walter Goodrich right here. We can just do new business. That's okay with everybody. Um, right. So Walter is here. Walter is here in his, in his capacity as tree warden. And we're going to talk about Walter's responsibilities and authority. And maybe we can educate some people. Maybe we can convince Walter not to quit being the tree warden. No, I'll try. <laughs> no. Um, yes. Okay. Um, I have been operating under the assumption uh, that. The tree warden in Conway is really not much of a position because the tree warden, as I understood it, and as I ran by selectmen at least once, and by Tom Hutchins once, wrote it out that the uh, duties of a tree warden are to take care of public trees, town owned trees. And okay. since Conway has right away, where the roads are. We don't really own the roads. But people have asked me about various trees along the side of the road. I, I have been telling them routinely that um, uh, it's their problem because Conway does not have uh, anything but a right of way. So Conway does not own those trees, it has a right to maintain those trees as far as the right-of-way goes and the right-of-way is confusing and it's different from road to road. So I've been working on that, but this year um, I've had a lot of complaints and most of them justified. Um, Conway is not doing a good job on tree trimming on the roads. The Waitley Road, you know, it's pretty ugly and um, there are other areas that are a problem. I think Roaring Brook Road is going to be okay. Um, I uh, have been pushing Ron to get that those those decay trees down so the town doesn't get sued if there's somebody dies on Roaring Brook Road. On Roaring Brook Road, and it's taken a couple of years, but the hazards now are down. Cutting was not terrible, though many people think it's terrible. And Ron Boyden has agreed. We had two meetings with him, and he's agreed to take and to dispose of the big stuff. And then Ron plans to grind the stumps, those big stumps, so he can mow them. So I think it's going to be good. And uh, however, on Waitley Road and the other end of Roaring Brook Road, I haven't been paying attention. I've kind of done a shitty job, but not figuring that I really had the authority to. Oops. Where on the Waitley Road? The almost all of it, Conway, has been trimmed uh, this year, some and last year, further down towards Waitley. Um, and a lot was taken last year to bring the bank back. Ron's objective is to get some on the road. Yeah. Um, and I think more than necessary. But anyway. I mean, normally, my understanding is, is that, that, that Eversource takes care of the side of the road that has wires on it, yeah. and and but it's, and they used to do both sides, but then they stopped doing that, and so then it became the town responsibility to do the other side. Well, there are some roads like Roaring Brook Road where there are no wires along the road, yeah. and so then they don't they don't do it yeah. on either side, and that's the thing is avoid the yeah. They weren't stepping up for that. Um, and then past years, I've gone out there myself, pulled out some anchors that were really scary. Um, anyway, I think that's going to be okay. But at the other end of Roaring Brook Road and uh, Whaley Road, you've probably heard complaints too from um, Kate McDonough. Yes. And um, the thing about Kate it's, she's mainly correct. I mean, she she nudges and the and, and uh, 
terms wrong. Um, I think mostly over landscaping in front of the town office building. I don't, I don't not part of that I don't much about it. But, um, the, the thing is, um, she has raised an interesting issue. She has written me. I was hoping there was a copy machine, but I'll leave this and you guys can copy it and look at it. I don't even want to solve any tonight, but you might want to look at this. Here is correspondence with Kate. And she wrote me in December about how things were looking back then. And then I uh, wrote uh, back to her and I agreed with her that things weren't looking good. Um, so this is tree trimming that Ron should be doing. Is doing, yeah. Um, it's not what he hasn't done. It's more oh. what he has done. He leaves stubs on the branch, not he, but a guy who works. Yeah. And uh, leaves standing spars, leaves hemlocks that are trimmed up and then just a little tuft on the top. And he tells me they're going to eventually come down. I don't know. So, and I, I said that I agreed with her, but I, in, in her first letter, and I said that um, I, uh, that Ron is a conscientious and a good guy. And I will talk to him about this. I did. And I wrote back to her and I said, I have some good news. I spoke with Ron. I asked. Him, and, uh, um, then uh, that was December. And then I heard from her again this month. Um, and she is, has done some research on the duties of a tree ward. Uh -oh. and this and also, not just ceremonial. Not not you, you don't get the sash and the top hat for the braids. <laughs> she writes a perfectly nice letter, but she's documented some of the problems. And she's gone overboard on some of them. Some are justified. Some are not. She knows her stuff. So she, what differentiates what she's talking about when, I mean, you started by saying those trees are the responsibility of the landowner. Um, if in fact, I'm correct, but she has quoted Massachusetts law, chapter 87, sections one through seven, public shade tree definitions. And this is, I think, critical because she thinks, she may be right, that it doesn't matter whether Conway owns the right of way, owns the road, and some land is on either side of it, or it's just a right of way. And it's not clear to me, and I think some, this probably wants to get clarified. Section one, that's something that we could do. Okay. Mm -hmm. All we trees might. within a public way are on the bounds thereof. No, 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 no. Shall be public shade trees and to be public property until the country. No, well, that's the first two things. All trees in the public right or the boundaries thereof shall be public shade trees. And the responsibility for public shade trees falls on the tree warden for her. And, and she's right about this. So, it's possible that she's right, and that and the, the town is more responsible than we have thought. Certainly, I have thought. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. I have printed out what I think is relevant here in the law. So, um, I mean, we, we did, there is a battle going on, like in Shelburne Falls right now, oh. over the trees that they cut down that went down Main Street. Yeah. Bridge Street yeah. in, in Shelburne Falls, and people were very upset yeah. that they took the trees down. And and I would think those were public shade trees, or what I would think of, you know, providing shade for people who are walking along the sidewalk. I don't think it has much downtown. to do with function. Huh. Um, I think it has to do with property ownership right away versus ownership. I think Shelburne Falls 
probably owns their roads, probably has a right of way, so many feet on either side of it. And they chose to take those trees down on toll because the state was going to give money, and if they didn't take those trees down, they weren't going to get the. They the were also a terrible safety hazard. They were disrupting all of the sidewalks. You know, the sidewalks were all lifting up and cracking, and people were tripping. Yeah, I think the roots were. You're going to yeah. get protest, and Chapter 87 delineates a process for hearings and for adjudicating and figuring out what uh, can be done these public hearings. So, so, so uh, you know, my understanding of a lot of the stuff, especially last year when the Waitley Road cuts were being made, is that what people were having issues with was just sort of um, Ron Sweet, our, our highway bus's philosophy of full sun exposure for the entire road surface right. all year round. And which led us to like the type of cuts that are being made, um, and and you know, do, and you know, and 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 he is, and and I, I remember asking you know, questioning him closely on this subject because of how many people were complaining about how it looked, and you know, and he he, he said we really the town saves a lot of money on the roads last many years longer. By not having, by not being shaded during the winter and not having as much of a freeze and thaw cycle as they otherwise would. Um, I'm not convinced of that, but I think maybe. I think with sun, full sun, you get a more extreme freeze thaw cycle. You think warms it up, cold night freezes, warms it up, cold night, cold all the time. Maybe not so much, uh, but I don't know. The roads that I see, like the Shelburne Falls Road um, on Dill Hill, yeah. where it's shaded by the, the hill yeah. that's next to it, not trees, the hill, are terrible. Well, that could be a result of shade. I don't know. Or the road that goes down to Buckland is heavily shaded oh, by, by, by the hill. Well, not everywhere. There are parts of that road that's there in the open. Uh, shade could cause the problem. Because I, mean, I, I wonder if it just means that's the frost can keep up. Because it's, it's not freeze thaw. Maybe it's just the depth of the frost and the amount of expansion of the soil. That would uh, make sense. Because it's a lot more work for the highway department to cut wide, you know, to, to cut such a wide swath on either side. Um, and, and the fact that he's reproducing that philosophy. As he goes along on further roads and what I mean, that's the that's what happened on Roaring Brook Road. If you ask me, this is it's a similar thing. The cuts were um, off, you know, quite a few feet off the road, so that it, it just opens up the road to sunshine all year round. And I don't. Yeah, my push on Roaring Brook Road to get the hazard starting to fall and drop on some, some of the trees were just shot and it really had to come down and. Uh, I think that uh, people get upset, but it had to go. Uh, I, I don't think that, that was a particularly, uh, it wasn't a particular reason to do it for shade and sun because the sun hits that road pretty well. Those maples were on the west side of the road. That road would get sun almost all winter day. So uh, I don't think uh, it was shaded, but I don't think that was well, certainly for me that was not the prime reason. Um, so I'm thinking that probably this issue needs to be figured out. And if it is figured out and the responsibilities are in fact as outlined here, which are quite a lot. Um, I don't know, maybe someone else would do a better job. Maybe she would do a better job. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, Kate McDonough. She, she certainly knows about pruning, but I'm, I don't. But um, I feel badly that things look crap. I feel that they can be improved. 
but at some expense. Ron was defensive about things, but crummy, but defended it, saying that he only has the lift for a limited amount of time. And so he's using the lift to cut down you know, the trees that, and, and get them down low enough that then he can cut them the rest of the way without the lift. That's, yeah, uh, right, but there's still a lot of trees left on Whitney Road from a year ago. They're just, um, that if they do get cleaned up, but there are many trees, some of them, in fact, on, uh, on pruning is just uncomfortable. Pruning has left stubs. If you have a stub, the tree cannot heal over until that thing rots. By the time that's rotted, there's a hole in the tree, the tree rots, and in some number of years, it's the end of the tree. And the proper procedure is to cut a branch at the little, it's called a callus, it's a little scar. You don't go flush with the trunk. You don't want to take off that tissue. You want to leave this ridge that, that starts the healing process. And if you do that, the tree, if the long as the branch is too big, has a chance of recovery. And so these are these are trees where most of the tree is live and you're yeah. cutting off a limb of a live tree that you don't end up as on the rest of the tree. Right. That should be practice. And uh, I, I asked Ron if he'd like me to talk to his guys. I've heard. Um, and I think Ron wants to do a good job. I like Ron. And in fact, I am hobbled partly by the fact that Ron and I are working together on buildings, which is really much more. And we work together great. I really like him. But it's really hard for me to do both. Um, I had no other reason to Share responsibility, but because we're, both, we're, we're co chairman of the, thanks to her, <laughs> of, the, of the building. But you'd be willing to spend time with Ron's guys, let's say, on Roaring Brook Road, looking out places yeah. where things were not done. The way he runs his department, they don't really do like a morning meeting or anything like that. They, they, all, they usually start their day in different places with they, ongoing they, assignments. And, 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 you know, I, he I, he does get defensive about yeah. like the what not defensive, but he, he defends the way that the jobs look by you know by saying that he, he undertakes all of this a range of duties based on the department decides that it's authorized, and he's authorized for six people, and he has four. He's been understaffed, yeah. and 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 um, you know he. He, you know, he, he says, come out, look, you know, everybody's on the job from the first thing in the morning till, you know, four or five, whatever the end of the day is. Everybody's there. Everybody's working. There's only so much. That and well, my solution to that would be to don't bite off more than you can chew and do a section of road, get, get it looking nice, because now this is gone to fix some of this high up insufficient pruning um the expenses to get the machine back or hire some um, but i think the main subject is for me is what's the story yeah i'm gonna I'm, i look forward to reading all about that and all see right. how much you're like leave this whole be transformed the meeting. i'm gonna leave this file great can you get this copy Absolutely. Okay. Um, the whole thing's here. Okay, thank you. And I will look forward to what you learn. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, the, first, uh, the first thing here, it's just all trees within a public way or boundaries thereof. What does that mean? Within a public way. 
when, when I think of the, that definition, it just reminds me, I think of Shelburne Falls, where we're probably talking 20 trees, as opposed to Conway, you know, we're talking thousands of trees, if you talk about all of the trees along all of the roads of Conway. You're talking about all the trees on in Shelburne Falls. Well, well but a lot of them there too. They do, but the, but the controversy there is a, a very well, set that, number of trees. That's true, yeah. There used to be a thing from the middle of the road, 20 feet each way. That's if the town owns it. In right. some towns, that's that's true, and it's true in power line easements, I think, mm -hmm. in many cases. And, but Steve Stang worked fairly for a fairly long time trying to go back to old deeds and figure out where the right of way was on many town roads and apparently they vary a whole lot and it was Steve as much as anyone who said that Conway's roads are not old they are right away these documents mm -hmm. um, may he rest in peace peace for him would be hard to get mm -hmm. yeah. um, well I guess you can just think of town council. Yeah, uh, since we have a good one now. Oh, good. Okay. All right. I will uh, stay tuned. Thank you. Do we need two tree wardens? One tree warden and one shade tree commission? <laughs> or I don't know. I don't know. This is this like what's needed. Yeah. And I have to admit, I'm tired. <laughs> I had my 80th birthday last year. Happy months. birthday. Yeah. And yeah. I'm happy to do the building stuff, but <laughs> doing both, I just assume not doing it. Um, not even if, not even if you can be assured of a top hat and sash for the next parade. <laughs> that might change. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Sorry to take your time. No. Uh, sure. Go back to the agenda. Just um, motion to approve the minutes of April 11th. So um, Second. Aye. All in favor? Yes, yeah. both of us. Yeah. No warrants. Meetings attended by select board members. I didn't have any. Um, just another just another uh, meeting about the other boiler at the Frontier uh, School. Oh, no. um, not a meeting meeting, but uh, long conversations. Um, well, I'll talk about that one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, public comments, no unfinished business. 615, joint meeting with the Finance Committee. And on the agenda <laughs> is a discussion of the fiscal year 23 recommendation for cost of living allowance, discussion of the budget as a whole, and discussion of warrant articles. Um, and what we hope to get, what I hope to get out of it, is a vote, an initial vote on the money articles, because we've got a lot of votes to take, and next week, we want it. We want it all, all voted on by next week, by the end of next week's meeting. So we'll leave the non-money articles for next week for a vote. So, so last week there were a number of money articles that looked funny, and you said I need to check on them. And and yeah, they, when, when, when I looked at the documents you sent, they all look more reasonable this time. I mean. I've been over them. Believe me, with the I, I have no doubt. So I, I did, did. I don't know if I had mentioned to people what happened because I believe it was with the fire and the police, and I had accidentally clicked the link to the entire budget instead of the salary wages. So that's all been corrected. I, but if we're going to vote on money articles, I'm just mm -hmm. wondering, you know, do we mm -hmm. have confidence? Yes. Yep. Great. All clear as mud. Great. And and just to let you know, I did write up, you should have notes on the Article 2 budget. I just went through each of the Article 2 items and where there was an increase, I just put in written form what it was for.
Um, do you want to call your meeting to order, Alan? And yes, I hereby call the finance committee joint order with the select board. We have all four members present, virtually and physically. <laughs> see you. Yeah, he's up there. Hi, Roy. Hey, can anybody hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yes, can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I Good do. Night. <laughs> so, um, you, Roy, what'd you eat? You can't hear you now. Muted. Wait, wait, that's not on the warrant. Or it's not <laughs> on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> So, I mean, do you have, do you have anything that you'd like to discuss before? Well, no, no. We had talked about the cost of the living increase. Yeah. Uh, Veronique and I had spoken and directly with each other, and we had figured like three percent. We had, as a rule of thumb, historically, I was gone by the Social Security call increase, which yeah. this year is scheduled for five point six nine percent. I think the year before was zero percent or close to it. A couple of years ago. And uh, we're thinking that maybe three percent. The reason being that uh, we can't print money like the federal government. There's only so much of a budget people can absorb, given our, our, our growth estimate potential for this year is $100,000, I think, of new growth. That's what Lee is saying. Ah. Yes. Yeah, I just got the updated figure from Lee, and so it's going to be about $100,000, dollars New growth is at $6.9 million and growing. Okay. New growth. 4.2 of that is from Eversource. Eversource. All right. So, you know, overall, the budget that we're proposing for Article 2 is going to increase it in a lot more than that. So mindful of our property taxes, and, you know, people's concerned about that already. You know, that's where we are. I don't know, Tom and, and Rian and Roy, have you any opinion? My thought is 3%. What, have you any opinion on that? 3% sounds generous. Yeah. Well, what are the schools that you're seeing? Um, we actually, the, the union agreements call for uh, Two, uh, which we just concluded are two, 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 except for about two thirds of the steps on the first year are going to be three. Oh, so it's almost like three, two, two. For, um, yeah, for, 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 um, for, for that's just for the te that's just for teachers. The teachers have an instructional assistant. So that, that the IAs are two, two, two. Two, two, two. All right, thanks. Um, and just so you're aware, the in Article Two in the warrant, um, I put in the three percent, just so we would have the worst case scenario. <laughs> and and again, you know, I, we follow the we 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 inform our decisions by what happened at the school, sure. but don't don't forget the school also has steps, which are monetary awards for being you know for, for your for you're there long enough that you're yeah for, for years of service you go up steps and that's what they also have longevity um they also have a union well yeah yeah we we actually um follow that lead we the the school also compensates its non-union employees as if they read but so you're saying the for teachers that reason. get and a few years get, ago when the rate when the social security was zero we still are doing. We still gave out. I think it was two and a half. And I know yeah. I'm saying, well, four years of two and a half. After four years, that's a ten percent increase. There's places in town. He stood up at town meeting and saying, "I'd like to do that for my employees, and I can." Yeah. You know, there's a. It's a tough one, but I think the threes is is, is myself is. I wouldn't vote for more. But when you yeah. say two, you're saying the teachers also get increases above that. Correct. From the steps and longevity, yes. Oh, yes. Also. That's yes. kind of stepped out of it. That's automatic. Yeah. 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 And most of those positions carry health insurance too, right? With the union? Yes. Yeah. We, Which a lot of our time employees are part time, right? Correct. Part -time, Correct. So, yeah. Correct. And it, the, if you're a frontier employee, it's a just a 20% copay. It's the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of the best. I think it's the best in the uh, union of 38, right? Yes. I the rest of them are all town employees and they're what the town has. So yep, yep, so. yep, understood. All right. So to look at total dollar, dollar figures, um, because Jam was helping me with this, I had done it just as a rough 3%, but I'd forgotten about 
increasing employee benefits. <laughs> so yeah. it's going to be for a 3%, it would be about twenty five, twenty six thousand dollars $26,000. Two and a half would be about twenty twenty one thousand, and 2% would be about fifteen dollars sixteen. dollars All right. At this point, Jan's saying health insurance premiums are going to be flat for mm -hmm. no increases projected for this company. All right. That's good. You know, the, the, the other thing is that it's the COLA is one of the few numbers that's a variable that we have control over to some extent. And that um, a lot of it is what's the ultimate number that you're comfortable with at, in terms of an overall budget increase. It's the one variable that you have to affect that. Yeah. And, um, you know, if the most recent hot off the press number for is what? For which? Total overall budget increase. The total overall yeah, is was so we're down to three point five five. Right, two hundred thirty-two thousand. So at three percent, the total increase would be three point five five. And yeah, when, when we were last talking about this, it lo was it looked like it was going to be two point five five. Right. Um, and then right. and then Franklin Tech came in with a hundred thousand dollar increase in their assessment. Okay. So we're talking like a hundred eight thousand dollar increase. Over and above the new growth estimate, which works out to be what, uh, Tom? What is that? About fifty cents per thousand, or something like that? One hundred thousand? Uh, will be less than that. Thirty cents per thousand. Yeah. About thirty cents per oh, thousand. Listen, more than that, but less than that. Okay. <laughs> Towards forty. Which, yeah, between thirty and forty cents per thousand. All right. Just, just my two cents here. You know, what are we really talking about? You said at three percent, it's. Uh, a 20 was the uh, absolute dollar amount. Was it Veronique? Was 25, it 25, 25, 25, 25. Yeah, so, so, if we, so we were going to propose a percent and a half. We'd be talking about 12.5. So 12.5, 12,005 over the whole budget is really insignificant. Uh, yeah. And I think that, um, you know, I think it, it sends the right message to the employees. Um, let's face it. And it, this is not a cheap town to live in. Um, and it's uh, to me, to me, the three percent is is fine. Um, I I respect Tom, and I probably feel the same. I wouldn't want to vote more than that. Most years we're arguing between two, two and a quarter, two and a half, three percent. That's this is the range that we really have. So um, yeah. So just for the record, I'm in favor of three. Thank you, your dog. Your dog is too. See, so you get a bone, boy. Gosh, how much you giving that dog this year? <laughs> uh, she wants to be part of everything, you know. I hear a lot of support for three. Yeah, yeah I, <laughs> I mean, real inflation is between seven, seven and a half percent. So you know, yeah, we can't make up for that. No. Unless you're Furcock, everybody at Furcock got that's what that's what their pay rate was. Really, seven percent? Wow, good for that. Yeah. Yeah, oh, Linda. What's that? Well, oh, Linda. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it depends on where the, where their pay was, is or was. You know, maybe they're just trying to bring it up to some parity with the private sector, but yeah, I don't. I, I don't really know. All right. So well, that's my thought. And then you now you want to get into any of your thoughts about the article two? My thought about the article two is, for the most part. Pretty, uh, pretty non-controversial. Our free cash position is uh, way higher than it was originally projected last year. So, I mean, we've got we've got room room to wiggle. Okay, so I I sit, now look, I missed last week's meetings. Or, I don't know. You all did, one. except for yeah, Rihanna. Did. Rihanna was here. Right. Yeah. You all missed. She gets oh. she gets extra lifesavers. I get nothing. Okay. <laughs> so the articles that I think uh, bear uh, attention, um, you know, the hundred and forty thousand over the fence mower, which um, and I've asked Ron about it, and um, he basically Got said it. he's he's pared back a bunch of requests with, at at. Um, I don't know whose request, but the point is, um, this isn't this isn't his wish list. This is just his minimal list, I guess, and it really doesn't address the uh, lack of functionality of the uh, capital improvements committee and the um, 
a lack of following sort of the, uh, you know, the, the, cause we're going to be faced, I think we're going to be faced with, um, you know, in the next year or two, you know, much, much higher requests that are going to be in this sort of, this is, this is a fire that's burning and we got to have it. And this leads again to that whole discussion. And it, it, it always comes around to that. And I am concluding after my conversations with Ron that there really is no appetite for repairing equipment in any sort of major way or even medium media to major way. Uh, minor repairs, yes, they could do minor maintenance, et cetera. And therefore, the request is always going to be for new new kinds of equipment. And that's the reality. And I think that, you know, you get pushed back at town meeting about it. And I can't, I really can't, I really can't make a judgment on this. You know, what I come up with repeatedly in my own head is it would really be lovely if two or three towns could get together with their own sort of hired um, skilled mechanic mechanics, but that doesn't still doesn't address the specialized tools and everything else that um, today's equipment requires. And, you know, I, I'm not taught speaking as the owner of a, you know, private um, contracting excavation business. Uh, I'm just speaking as, um, you know, basically an outsider looking in at what what I think they're dealing with. But our town's needs can't be that much different than other towns. And I think in terms of a regionalization, that would be something that I would be in, in favor of. It, you know, again, somebody would have to look at the numbers and see that it makes sense, but maybe one or two, two, two this is outside the scope of this discussion, but that's one article that I think um, is, uh, you know, is gonna get some, some conversation. And, um, Let's see the, 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 the you know just explaining some of the stuff. Um, the Archibald Bob McLeish Stone House. I don't know what that's about. That's um, CPA. We don't vote on it. I, I know. Well, I know what the the, the town votes to. It, it's what we they voted on it two years ago. The one meeting that was in the uh, new highway shed. That um, that it was a CPA vote then. It was the only CPA article that ever lost a vote at town meeting. It lost by one vote. Okay. It's back. It's back, but under new management. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that's good to know. Um, and, and as for your other suggestion, you know, the, the, the regionalization of, of special services like this, um, we, the, the only experience that we have as a town was not a good one. Just so that you know, so that everybody knows this, because this I hear this a lot, but the, there there was a few years back, Frontier led the uh, an attempt to have a four town IT department. Hmm. I don't know if you remember this, Roy. This, um, <laughs> but uh, I remember the arguments and the lawsuits and everything else that came out of it, and 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 it was uh, a, 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 a Frontier hired an IT department that was larger than Frontier's own needs and that one, at least one person was going to be going out to the towns in accordance with their percentage of population. So Conway was entitled to 17% of the man's time. And the, the, the reality is that that could never be cleanly or neatly established. And when we needed him, we couldn't get him. When, when he was around, there was nothing to do. And there was so much um, arguing over getting him at the, wh where each town wanted him and the school was so fed up with having to deal with it all um, and he ended up filing a lawsuit against the school for the, the terms of his employment um, it just got where I could go on and on and on but the so like when we've tried the, the idea say of, of a shared human resource position that the school and the four towns would do the school wants nothing to do with any of these shared positions anymore unless we're also going to create a full-time position to oversee the sharing of that position. Yeah, sure, sure, of course. Um, <laughs> but then we could have a position that oversees that one. Yeah, so, yeah. So look, but the thing of it is that, um, first of all, this is the first I've heard of it. And I've been on the finance committee for all these consecutive years. So that, that uh, controversy really never spilled past the school committee is what I suspect. 
Um, but that's, in that's interesting because um, I've also always thought that, and, and again, this is that even the FERCOG, you know, IT ought to be something that the FERCOG is offering all its towns. But be that... Uh, You're right about that. Well, okay, but they don't. And there's probably reasons why they haven't yet. Um, that said, it, it brings us back to the, uh, the equipment situation and, and a uh, highway crew that is of, you know, reasonable skill, okay, but they don't, you, you can't expect them. I can't, I don't expect them to have the skill, let's say two years into a piece. Well, again, let's say three and a half years into a piece of equipment where any of the warranties I would assume are gone. Okay. Do they have the ability to deal with that? Nobody would say, I mean, they just don't, not in a town this size, you know, maybe a town the size of Greenfield might. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But, but, here, here's the other side of it all, uh, not the other side of it. And what, what Ron actually cried to me about was that he's, you know, he's got a, when he has an issue with like a, a truck and he's got to go up to Greenfield or wherever with this truck, and then he's got to have somebody follow him so he can get a ride back here. It's like, you know, it, you add this stuff up and it, it does add up. How much it adds up to? I don't know. Does it add up? To, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, I, lend, I, I give credence to a lot of his arguments, and yet it's very hard to look at the cost of this new stuff and stomach it. And that's, that's what we're up against here. But a lot of that is exactly what you're right, because we don't ever see the other side of the balance sheet that, that balances the stuff out. Yeah. And there's all, it's what you're talking about is just hidden costs to the way that business is currently done. And um, well, it's not it's, that it's it, he does get he has gotten new stuff at times. But again, there's elements of the town that are like, why the hell are you buying this new stuff? Roe or Coleraine or whatever, you know, they buy 20 year old stuff and it's great stuff. OK, that was one issue. Let me move on to the other one. The other one is like, why do we have a uh, stabilization account for a fuck a new fire truck? And we don't have such an account for some of the major pieces of equipment in the highway arsenal. We, we have a capital. It's capital stabilization. stabilization. Right, but it's, it's not. Uh, and you also, Roy, there's also chapter 90 money. That, yeah. you know, the fire department's not part of. Yeah. That's yeah, what we but, use for doing the roads. Well, we happening. bought new equipment with it. Yeah. Those two new loaders with chapter 90 money. Am I right, Ronnie? Only thirty-five thousand dollars. Uh, <laughs> we traded, yeah, but we also traded in the Caterpillar. Yeah, that was, was a big piece of equipment. Uh, hey, Ron, that was Ron, all done in the house. That wasn't done at town meeting. Yeah. Okay, so, Ron, I, I didn't even know you were in the audience. Chapter nine, money, and all the other bullshit you can dig out. Yeah, Ron, I didn't know you were in the audience, but you should correct me if I represented any of this stuff incorrectly. You're doing good. He's taking careful notes, Roy. Don't worry. <laughs> he says you're doing good, right? Okay, thanks. Thanks. Okay. What are you drinking? Yeah, yeah, the clear stuff. <laughs> Cold water. Uh, but, and, and, and a lot of it, too, is you know, the town has never voted to approve the capital spending and a capital spending plan for, and I remember two years in a row. It, no, but we, we had. And, and, and you know, it's, it's a new idea. It, it, it was at the time a new idea. And the only way that you ever get new ideas past is if they eventually become old ideas it just it just takes it just takes time and so yeah um and, so, you know, so and, and I, I if sooner or later if you keep bringing it up it's gonna it's gonna pass it, you know, it, well, I don't it, know. maybe okay. not maybe not but if I don't know if Baker ever get his wood chipper. Yeah. Okay. I, I know. I know when 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 I go to the select board trainings and the select board conferences, all they ever push that. You not all, but it, the all. You know, they the the capital plans, capital spending plans, capital spend save towns money. They save towns money. You get newer stuff, and you don't. You're not always running back and forth with all these hidden costs, and it pays for it. It do, it really does pay for itself. It really here's all this. You know, towns have, tra have kept track of their finances while they transition from using all old stuff to a capital spending plan, and it supposedly pays. 
Yeah, but a couple of years ago, Ron was, Ron was saying, well, we're buying the old stuff because the new stuff it isn't working and it's too much to take care of. That was only on the, the, the trucks big trucks for the emissions at the time because the emissions got down the strokes of the. Right. And now you're factory. saying that that's taken care of. So now buy the new. Right. Right. But I've heard that it ain't and taken care of yet. The other problem, actually. The other problem with the old stuff now is because so many people were doing that, actually are still doing that. Is the parks are becoming so hard to find? Well, I give it to. Yeah, yeah. This is, unfortunately this is now by it's a window. Complicated by the, the everything is for the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah. One of the big concerns I have is that we have yet to take a full inventory of all of our equipment, our physical infrastructure. And it seems every year we go in, I mean, Ron, you already deferred on 450 or $25,000. I mean, you took off from the uh, wish list this year, two pieces of equipment totaling what, 425,000 or 300,000 for the scraper and 125 for uh, an excavator, right? No, that was good. more than a all right, but you took off the uh, scraper for 300, right? Which may be on for next year. In other words, the point that I'm, I'm making here is that I don't really have a way of looking ahead more than one year. That's not that's not good planning. Well, that's the problem with the plan. <clears throat> and um, we really it would be great if the town the town meeting would have all right. This is year one, looking out three years. This is what's going in year two, three, and. So we know how to budget and what, how to put us how, how to capitalize the stabilization fund. So we know what to put aside for banking money for purchases and you know what's coming up. How to Alan, account for it all. Alan, we, we did have this, and that was our that was our, you know, we had it for the highway equipment, and uh, you know, we, we were moving uh, like pieces on a checker chessboard or a checkerboard. We'd say, well, let's defer this and shove it forward for the year. We we did have such a thing, and we had an inventory of most of the town equipment. It probably wouldn't take that much to get back that back in order again. Uh, we just need we need a you know we need a committee that has more than one one or two people on it. Makes sense to put money in the budget this year to hire a, a consultant or somebody to come in and help us with that. I mean, I'm, a lot of towns have professional. Professional government and all that, that has that type of capability. We don't as a whole town. I mean, what do you think? You sound like bigger towns. Yeah. Well, like a mechanic to come in and take a look at all our equipment and give us a maintenance schedule and what's the estimated useful lives so we can start going to town committee and say, this is all the big pieces of equipment. These are how many useful years or in terms of hours that are estimated left. What our estimated annual usage of our engine hours is in these pieces of equipment. And uh, what we're looking at to replace them. So we can say, all right, this year we have to allocate X number of dollars because we're anticipating in years two, three, four, five, having to replace this piece of equipment, that piece of equipment. It's kind of hard to get an estimated trading value going out more than a couple of years, but at least we have some idea. Well, actually, me and which, Bob had a pretty good plan. Which, which leads me to come full circle again and, you know, Again, this doesn't address this year's uh, warrant or stuff, but we probably should look at the lease option again. Uh, again, you know where where uh, maybe it gives you a more a better and closer, more accurate look at um, towns can't lease, Roy. The, the Massachusetts laws are such that leasing is not. Doesn't no, work. that's you can you you can lease. It, the, the way they are, the way the rules are written, and it was all it was passed back in November of 2016. Basically, you can't leave. The lease has to be submitted every year for bid. It's really hard to find a company that's willing to lease those. Companies. Oh, really? Because yes. we spent we spent a lot of time on that uh, capital. November 7, 2016, new lease laws went into effect in Massachusetts that makes leasing pretty much impossible. Okay. Okay. Well, let's leave that to. That's well, the rest. Why have we been increasing the lease line on his budget so that he can have the lift more often and things like that? That's lease with an option. That's leasing. That's a full operating lease. That's different as opposed to leasing equipment with the intention to own. That's different. No, no, no. Not to own. Leasing. Oh, equipment. that's renting. Okay. That's rental, about... not lease. Lease is okay, mean, well, lease okay, really means that you're going to own it in the end. Or if it's a full operating no. lease, 
Okay. You buy out, you got a lease buy it in the end, and you know, that's it. Yeah, but at least so if you have something in five years, you know you can just bring the piece of equipment back and get a brand new one the same uh, way. It's not that easy, but you know, the thought yeah. is that that's a real that's a that's a true lease, not a capitalized lease. True leasing is pretty much precluded from uh, Massachusetts. Well, I'm th I'm thinking of okay. Well, I don't know how when Dana was on the committee, he was he was uh, oh. kind of adamant about oh, leasing, gosh. but uh, the whole point Keep in mind, would we're in the municipal sector, not the private sector, so it's different. There are different rules that apply. Yeah, sure. But the whole point there would be to um, have a, a much more accurate picture of what it really costs to run this stuff yeah. uh, on a yearly basis. Oh, and, and run, yeah. when I say run yeah. it, I mean own it and run it. Own it and operate yeah. it. Yeah. But anyway, we digress. There's, there's no point in... Oh, well, yeah. Running. No, I mean, we're, we're just originally talking about the article, too. In terms of the article, too, does anyone have any further issues, suggestions, whatever? Well, one thing I was wondering is it looks like the, the Board of Health, so that got rearranged. Yeah, they don't have the transfer station anymore. The select board Wait. does. Do you see, Tom, there? Select board. I... Who? Select board is overseeing the, the transfer station. Transfer station so now. If you look at the notes that I put together, notes on Article 2, I have a little spreadsheet there that shows I can explain that okay. to you if you want, because the the transfer, sorry, the Board of Health budget got kind of split up into three. Some of it went to run the public building maintenance out of <coughs> things that the electricity and stuff like that. So the Board of Health budget went there. And then um, uh, then the rest of it came to the transfer station that wasn't you know, directly Board of Health. So, and I wanted to try to show some true costs of what's going on. Right, yeah. so this spreadsheet shows that was the previous Board of Health budget, $228,000. And the new transfer station budget at 184. There's the amount 8,200 that got moved to the buildings um, department. And then there's the new Board of Health budget. And then the combined Board of Health transfer station and buildings, and the net increase was 14, just about 14.5. Mm -hmm. So it did go up, and it's really due to the transfer station. As a matter of fact, I haven't really incorporated it since I just found out this past week that the cost of our trash disposal mm -hmm. is going up from about, I think it was about 86 to about 100. Mm -hmm. I have to double check Jan's email per ton. Right. Wow. And that's really, and the hauling had already gone up. Yeah. So unfortunately, so I'm hoping I have enough leeway in the budget I put together. But but long term, this is an issue. The transfer station, long term, is a cost yeah. to have a transfer station will be going up yep. greater than the rate of inflation yeah. every year from now until yeah. I mean, who knows. Kirk made a presentation and at the frontier like the colleges, and the healthcare, and the dentist. But but you know, it's it's like how and and we have to really decide as a community how we're going to pay for this structurally because right now it's sort of loose, yeah. and um and uh, you know do 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 you put it all on the sticker fee and do like Deerfield have a seventy five dollar sticker fee? Do and you, they have they have uh, and, 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 and they per bag trash. They also have per yeah. bag. Do you, do you put it all onto the general fund and just do, yeah. assess it? Do you do you put some of it and you could also charge for particular disposal options if you yeah. put you know the, uh, and yeah all of the above none of what whatever we have to at yeah. some point yeah hauling figure, costs figure are, that out nothing would go up from here on in and that's just that's been predicted for years and it's happened however it happens our our transfer station is a real deal and people yes it complain, is but it's an incredible deal yes it is and when are we going to decide how to manage? We haven't talked about this, but but I'm open. Uh, you know, I was. We were going to talk about um, potentially having a non-binding referendum at town meeting. Just a question: How do you want to fund? The yeah, I think that uh, given people, the town should be given the town meeting should be given a few options. Right. Mm -hmm. And since we have those electronic things that have four options on them, we can yeah. choose up to four yeah. options. Yeah. And we so only ever use idea. A or B or one or two, whatever. We haven't used those last two buttons ever. But that would be for a special town meeting because we don't have it on. Yeah, 
Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. It's a special oh, town. It's a non binding. Yeah. I think there should be a presentation by from the Franklin mm -hmm. Regional Solid Waste District as well as the MRF. Well, I to educate can, people on what's going on. The big I can picture. certainly help with that because I was on the board of the MRF for 15 years. So, right. thank you. <laughs> um, and Jim, Important. we are having this transfer station. I hopefully you got the flyer the transfer station, but about the Zoom meeting next week just to start getting the concerns from people. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's, it's, there's a lot to unpack. A lot going on with the transfer station. So, yeah. yeah, there are a lot of things that we don't charge for that we should yes. be charging for. Yes, absolutely. Was there anything like else? what? Uh, Article two. Uh, a lot of the things that go to the bulky waste. Oh, I think we charge for mattresses, but yeah, we, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things. That we Mattress don't tire, for. we charge for tire, rubber tires, and we charge for tires. And the fact that there's just a handful of users that are responsible for. I mean, so okay. yep. yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, well, so that's a bigger question, but I mean, I, I accept what's, I'm, I'm comfortable, you know, we're not going to vote tonight, but I, I have a further issue with Article 2. Tom or Rihanna or Roy, have you anything else about Article 2? We're talking about a 3% three, a 3 COLA. We're talking about a $233,000 increase. So we're talking about Netting out projected new growth for 125,000. We're talking about somewhere around a 40 cent per thousand increase in property taxes. I'm just amazed that it's only 233. I mean, given that the 200,000 of that are the schools. Yeah. That, well, the rest of it is. And, and I'll, my really response flat. to that is, I mean, we have a lot of we have a lot of open positions. The cost of the government hasn't really gone up. Yeah, well, yes and no. I mean, we have problems getting hiring people and retaining people. So, I mean, you can go to the transfer station on a Wednesday and it's probably not going to be open, but theoretically in your property tax bill, you're entitled to have it open, you know, three days a week. It'll be open tomorrow. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, these are the kind of things that we're backing up against now, you know? So, you know, being competitive with the wages. That's uh, going to be an it's going to be an increasingly challenging issue. Yeah, two hundred thirty-three thousand is remarkable. I think in terms of the uh, if we keep it to that level. How come the uh, the tech school did the big jump? When we went from four kids there to ten kids there, yeah. so the extra six kids is and a because we're a resort in a hundred thousand in their assessment. And we're a resort town, so we got a higher assessment rate. <laughs> yeah, but it's not as bad as a number of years ago. We had six kids going. Our assessment was 150,000. Same year. Wow. So that's 25,000 a kid. Same year from Gill was 3,000. Yeah, yeah. That's all Desi, you know. That's that. That's all that EQV nonsense. The minimum mandatory contribution. Before. Yeah. From way back. That's from Desi funding. You know, we had a few wealthy people move in town and we lost $100,000. And, and this is something, you know, so there, there is going to be on the warrant, there's something, the uh, citizens petition for uh, the millionaire's tax that is being considered in Boston. Mm -hmm. and, oh, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, and, and so this is one of the things that people just do not realize that the way that, you know, that one of the one of the things that binds us so much and it's an algorithm from DESE, from Department of Se Elementary and Secondary Education, that determines your minimum mandatory contribution for all your school taxes, and what the magnifier with, and it's based one of one of the things that they base more than half of it on is the total income of everybody in your zip code divided by residents, yeah. and then they compare that ratio to the other people, other towns in yeah. your district. So when we have one very wealthy taxpayer, just one is all it takes. Yeah. to move into our town yeah. it bumps our average up and this happens year after year after year and it's one of the reasons why our school taxes are higher than they otherwise would be we we're a small town yep. with a handful of wealthy taxpayers you know the candle guy and, the Yankee and, candle and that that's I a famous story about country. what happened to waitley and he moved to waitley and they went up 20 something percent in yeah. one year right. and, oh, and then he moved to lever and then he moved to lever right? yeah. his Heirs sell his home in Leverick, which is like a mile of frontage. <laughs> his property taxes is about 25% of Leverick's budget. Oh. So if they sold that place to a nonprofit, some you know, kids yeah. with severe disabilities, and it would be like a Disneyland for them. 
Yeah. But liver would be. Holy shit. Well, Northampton has well, a problem with Shelburne, oh. Shelburne, over Shelburne with Cosby's residence there. Yeah. yeah so yeah. on paper, everyone yeah. in Shelburne has more money than they do. Well, Northampton had that problem. That's us. Yeah. Northampton had the problem with Smith Paul, College started that. buying up Green Street. I mean, they lost a lot of rateables. Yeah, Deerfield Academy. It, re it really is, is the case in Massachusetts that the rest of us subsidize the very wealthy in this context. Yeah, absolutely. The way to desk for calculation. Yeah. Absolutely. We lost like $100,000 of funding in one year as a result. When this wealthy family moved in and, you know, got accounted for. None of this is going to get the Article 2 passed. So, yeah. No, what will, though, is the fact that the town administrator salary line went down and we get to, <laughs> and we get to show off Veronica. Yeah. <laughs> and we get to call her up and say, not only is she doing a great job, but it's costing us less. Look, it's in black and white. Yeah, right here. <laughs> yeah. So, Phil, do you know what is the individual assessment on the frontier? I mean, the Franklin textbook. How much are they charging us a whack? How many more kids, and what's the increase? Uh, we went from four kids to ten kids. So six and, kids, and and the the increase thousand. the increase is almost exactly a hundred thousand from last yeah. year. So Sixteen thousand. Or so, yeah, 16, that's it. Seventeen thousand. Yeah, it cost a little over seventeen thousand dollars per student there. From yeah, the that's we're getting a deal on that. Okay, well, we you know some years we we make out, some we don't. That's what yeah. it comes down to. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's about eighteen, nineteen thousand per semester. Per yeah, that's why I broke it out this year on the warrant because I wanted us to be able to see exactly. Yeah. What was. <laughs> I mean, with school choice, we have no, it really shouldn't be a separate, it should be included as part of Article 2 because we have no choice anyway. Right. Correct. Right. <laughs> so the, the other technical schools at the bottom, the last two lines, is that the Smith that's, vote? That's correct. So if there were other technical schools, but it really is Smith vocation. Smith. Yeah. How many kids are that? Do you know? Two. Two. Two or thirty-four thousand dollars each. Well, no, nineteen. Well, we have to include transportation. Oh, oh yes. It yeah. looks like thirty-eight and twenty-five. Right, it's sixty-two. So two Maybe. kids. That's over thirty. Yeah. Oh yeah. Three. That's more than you mass. Because of transportation. Uh, that's what two it is. Pupils. Both of them is probably dry. Yeah. Uh, it would be cheaper to hire those kids to pay those kids to drive themselves. Yes. Yeah, that's oh, it's it's it, ain't le it ain't legal. <laughs> Actually, we could send them to college cheaper. Yeah, right. pretty much. And when we were sending them to the when it was cost of twenty five a few years ago, it was it was still cheaper to go to UMass. Room and board. Oh well. Seems funny. And you're looking to vote on Article 2 to have a recommendation from the Finance Committee tonight on Article 2, or you want to wait till next week? Well, just be all ready to go so that when we do it next week, when we right. vote everything, it's just a pro forma thing. Sounds good. So, all right. Because the, 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 uh, the, the warrant uh, period closes next Monday yeah. afternoon, right? Mm -hmm. So thereafter, we should vote. Okay. All right. Do we do a recommend? I don't know if we do a recommend. Oh, yeah. Article 2. Oh, yes, oh, we do. Of course. Oh. Yes. We do. Uh, yeah, we do. Oh, okay. <laughs> we do. Ron, what's the increase in the building maintenance thing? 14,000? Huh? The transfer. What are you doing? Because I'm taking over. Now I'm going to be in charge of building the ground. If you look at my notes, it's in there for the notes and building. Oh, we to the, the notes. Department. Yeah. So the building maintenance went up roughly 14,000 because of the new highway garage and also because of the transfer station. So those two together. And then the highway was about 13,000 and almost 5,000 was for fuel supplies and the rest was the polar. And I, you know, when I saw that, I thought when that comes up at town meeting, that building maintenance line, that should be the select board or the town administrator that 
advocates for that. It's not really fair to make Ron stand up for that when he's being asked to do that by the select board and or the town administrator. What's that? I appreciate that. Good. Hey Roy, how come the how come the IT went up ten percent? <laughs> well, we we went through that at the last uh, well last time we were discussing it. But hang on a minute. Let me just hang on. Am I muted here? I don't even know. Just, just no, we hear you. We hear you, Roy. Oh, okay. Uh, basically, yeah, you know, we have um, a fourth site. That's the town garage for um, uh, for Comcast. And right there, if I can find it, you can look at it on the tab. And uh, as I was reviewing this tab today, and Veronique, I might want to do things to make that tab a little clearer. Um, what's what's my drop dead on that? Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, roughly Comcast. So if it's, uh, I think Comcast is about forty percent of that ten uh, percent. Uh, there's increased uh, users of licensed versions of Office. Uh, there's increased um, malware and ransomware um, subscription items. That's that's really what it is. Um, a very small increase in my own time that is the that is required to deal with some of the um, some of the stuff we're facing. Um, it's it's not it's you know it's not a set it and forget it situation, and. Um, uh, that's, you know, that's, I, I can speak, I'm still trying to pull up the tab because there's so many tabs on this thing. <laughs> <And> my, <laughs> um, just give me a minute here. Uh, let's see, where are we? We're at, it's 151, right? Uh, let's see here. here. 159. Yeah. Okay. So if you look at the category anti-malware patching, updating, and admin, that's uh, row 22. Um, so it went from $3,600 to $7,596. Um, uh, let's see. That is so. Phone went down $720. Comcast went up $1,920. Microsoft went up $88. The anti malware, that stuff, that's a big category there. $3,996 um, increase. It's a total of a forty-one hundred and two dollar increase. If I'm, is that correct? Yeah. I got it up on the screen, Roy. Oh, okay. Well, because I'm looking at my own here. Okay. Let me let me um, let me see yours there. Yeah. So if you look at the far right towards the bottom, increase year over year. This is showing you the differences of these uh, categories, um, and um, it adds up to you know this anti malware which was broken out to, to the left, to columns H and I, where you have, um, this is the, yeah, that's it. You've got the, uh, uh, that's, this is, this is what the stuff costs. And um, that's, that's it. It's just, um, you know, the software and subscriptions particularly shows a big increase there, 18.53%, right? Um, by the professional and technical, which is basically me, um, that's an increase of 4.12%. So that's that's where it is. And I, and I think I told Veronique I could back that down to, you know, 3.5 or something, but chances are I'll be coming at the end of the, uh, of the uh, year yeah. for, for money. At the end. Yeah. I mean, if it's if it's a reasonable year without a lot of uh, user support and a, a lot of uh, weird stuff happening, um, it could even be less. But it's not because honestly, uh, even at that number, there's deferred, there's maintenance that gets deferred, if you will. So, just just the realities of today's IT world. Did I answer your question, Tom? You did. And we haven't been held hostage yet. <laughs> well, that's we haven't, we uh, haven't uh, refused to pay. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I would never think of doing that to my own municipality. I live here, folks. <laughs> All right. So. 
Phil, are you pondering? Are we, no. we going to start on the warrant article then? That, um, yeah, we should. Which paper is that one? Yeah. It, 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 here's yeah, where, have, here's where we get into you didn't, on the big one. They didn't they, they they didn't have if you look the money articles are on your big recap spreadsheet. So you can see it says warrant articles and it uh -huh. says the number of the article and the amount and where it's yeah they, they would need. We do have this this big one. Yeah, yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, I didn't print yeah, it. Yeah, there, there's a lot of necessary warrant. information. Well um Here's a thought. I'm looking at my calendar, and the, the warrant period closes next Monday. Right. And I'm, but I'm thinking with the finance committee, would you want to meet Thursday of next week? That's the uh, 28th. We make and we can make a vote in Moroni if you can give us the, the warrant. So when we convene not next Monday, the following Monday, we'll have all the votes. We can uh, just run them down. What do you think? Okay. Does that sound good? Let me uh, go to my calendar. I'm talking Roy, Rihanna, Tom, that we as a finance committee meet on uh, Thursday, April 28th. When does the work close? The 25th. Well, of course, on time. Okay. I'm always used to having a town meeting in May. It's June 4th, so we have an extra few weeks. But that's still so that's then, still real close. So I was going to say, so then we, we would vote it out. because I was thinking you were going to have the select board close it and vote it that night so that next, we could next then, Monday yeah 25th that's what I was hoping yeah. for oh that's right that. well if you uh, would you want to meet you want to meet Sunday you want to meet Sunday this, this Thursday or this Thursday or yeah I'm thinking this Sunday because this Thursday might be too soon right too to meet will you have will you have a full because we need to actually have the draft and that was what yes, Tuesday. Has. the you numbering need. the numbering has to be everything has to be finished you think you'll have a finished product by this? Uh, or is the weekend more realistic you know, by Friday? You know, just to make sure that I do have it, but I, I, I think it is. It's been reviewed by town council for the most part. So I really? think we're, yeah. So you want to meet this Thursday evening? That sounds good. Boy, are you available to meet, Rihanna? Are you available to meet this Thursday? This Thursday. That's like uh, Thursday? day after tomorrow. How about you, Tom? This Thursday? In the, in the night time? Yeah. I think so. By you Zoom? Want? Yeah, you want to meet? You want, meet well, I think meeting in person makes sense. Yeah. We should. Can we meet at uh, your place there, the town offices, Bernie? Is it possible? Yes. On Thursday? Yes. What time? I don't know. I'm thinking, what, 5.30? Is that good? Okay, we, we do have a Conway Currents, but I could put you in one of the other meeting um, rooms. We have one at five o'clock, but... Oh, about six. Six o'clock. Does six sound better? How about Roy? Are you available this, this Thursday yeah, at six? I, I'm available, but full disclosure, I was, I spent the last week in more crowds and airplanes oh. and uh, things that I, and I'm sort of, um, I'm, it's full disclosure. I, you know, that's, I, I don't, I, I, I'm feeling fine today, but it's Tuesday. Yeah. Friday was the last sort of exposure, so yep. I think that I should give it a couple more days before. Yeah, it makes sense. All right. Potentially, we can zoom. You, Veronica, are you going to be with us? I'll, I'll be with you, and I can. So we can zoom you in. Problem. Okay, right. zoom. Alan, okay. are you going to want to know the source of all the money? Yes. Is that that's you have to vote on that too. Is that missing that's here? Form. No, that's in the spreadsheet. It's in the spreadsheet, though. So we have to bring the, oh, okay. the budget oh, okay. recap. Okay. Budget yeah. Recap. yeah, the budget recap, right? So we have to bring this budget recap with us this Thursday. Yeah, okay. That means uh, on Thursday, 28th, what time? This Thursday is the uh, 21st. Uh, first. first. From 6 to, I don't know, 7.30. Should take us an hour and a half. You know, like with Monk, we don't pick her too much. <laughs> okay. So what, What's uh, the free cash that state's got us at? 428.9, I think it is, right? Yeah. What's it going to be after town meeting? Thirteen um, two. <laughs> last year we projected free cash at thirty seven thousand. I heard forty four twenty nine. I was like, wow, we really over budgeted. <laughs> uh, uh, how did that? How did that happen? Does anybody know? All that new growth. I mean, we didn't plan. I I, ha I have got a beginning of an explanation from Mike, but I gather it's not an easy calculation. 
from what I understand. So. I mean, there must have been either more excise taxes or more uh, dog licenses. That's insignificant. Uh, well, that, <laughs> the initial <laughs> estimate, <laughs> estimate by Hutchinson may not been accurate. I think that's probably what, that's what it is, but whatever. Yeah. It was a pleasant surprise. Well, right, but it would be good to know what, what was the cause of it. That's all. I remember a couple of years ago, we had the uh, Trans Canada thing that we got the money from. That was an extra right. 150000 That was a gift from above, right? Right. That was a like, whoa. <laughs> now it's First Light or whatever they're called. Yeah. <laughs> and we got money from Nexamp this year. That was, more, that was more than most people think. How right. much? From what? Nexamp from the solar, from the solar field on Poland Road. Oh, well, by Buffalo. the Billingberg Road, around 65,000. Oh, there is more now. Wonderful. Yeah. Closer to 80. Wow, that's wonderful. So that thing's running. Well, it's turned off right now. It's turned it's off right now. Running. That's a whole nother story. But uh, <laughs> Ernie, is it, possible? it doesn't matter to us. The town they, notice. They, it's a, they have a 20 year pilot um, payment. That's loop. the yeah. only conundrum oh, is that it, well, if you're okay, meeting so, on Thursday, it's so not being running. Oh, I thought we had 48 hours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but today's Tuesday. They already sold oh. all their power. So it's already Tuesday period. at 7. They ain't producing anything. Correct. I better run over there and put it up then. You tell me. They're losing yeah, so money. I don't know. I'd go down the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on, I mean, it's 7 o'clock. <laughs> Too late. I don't know if I can. Um, <laughs> okay, so what, what time on Thursday are we going to meet? Okay. What time? Alan. Six o'clock this Thursday, Six. town okay. office. Okay, don't forget about me, though. So we won't, but we'll, uh, we'll zoom right. you in. All right. I have to get over there and post it. Right here. So the we important post. thing that you're going to do is you're going to get the recommendations? Yes. We'll, go, we'll have it. And so next Tuesday, we'll do the final vote, and we're done. Yeah. Ex except, so there's one, except there's one problem with that. When we do it together, we have a greater chance of reconciling our differences when we don't you're gonna you know That's we're gonna have some meeting separately then you know? yeah, well figure I... it out then figure it out together keep your questions in for when we meet on monday i guess monday, monday night yeah we'll have that don't forget roy town meeting that's always another place to discuss yeah, town meeting is in, uh <laughs> but never know, Lord, it's like really... yeah but didn't we used to have this unwritten rule that we really wanted to be on the same page all the time, not most of the time, but all the time. <laughs> if we did, then why were we in bed? It's so foolish. <laughs> what? No, no, seriously. I mean, there's three of you, five of us. It's, uh, you know, I mean, it it makes some some sense because when you go before the town meeting, they're not scratching their heads. It's like, oh, everybody's in agreement. I may as well agree too, you know? I, 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 I'm, I think every year I've been in town government, I've always voted no on something. <laughs> that's, <laughs> Phil, that's your campaign style <laughs> yes yes and, and now now i'm the chair and it's sort of you know the budget of the chair you know whatever and uh, there's nothing there's nothing that i'm inclined to vote no for <laughs> change things up somehow uh, okay right. whatever right. thank you see you third anything else anything else i mean We've pretty much went around the world twice. Yes. You got to give an official adjournment. No. All right, we're officially adjourned. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. See you Thursday. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. See you Monday. Okay. Monday. Monday night. Busy Yeah. All right. Very high tech. I like it. See you. See you next week. Thank you. Well, we can do that after because we're going to have to come out of executive session and do something in public. You will? Okay. And we're not? Okay. So items not anticipated 48 hours in advance. I don't have any. Town administrator update. Um, yeah. You said that one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go.
um, so we did get some information of, um, forwarded to me about Nexan, just the update, which um, was quoting Ethan Giles. You say it that way, Giles? Giles? Right? Yes, okay. Yes, thanks, um, for, thanks for making that call and keeping after that, Bob. Uh, yes, thank I, you. He, he responds when we ask him, and, and I figured I'd send him a note, and he did. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I think he cares about Conway. He knows who we are. Uh, so, and they're anxious to get it working again. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. So, so that was that was one thing the update, which was basically that they're still looking at it, but they're they're working on it. They found something wrong yeah. with a piece of equipment, so they're repairing that, and they were supposed to be there today. So I haven't heard back how it went. Yeah. All right. Um. um other things i just i i tended i had a municipal vulnerability program grant planning session and um attended a couple of webinars and then also i'm very sad to report that we lost our former town council john jack h Fitzgibbon, um on april 7th uh, uh, that's unbelievable I'm still in shock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very diving in bone air. Uh, well, I haven't heard what caused what what, the, what happened, but I'm sure he was doing some of that down there. <laughs> so, select board member comments, concerns. No. So just to give you a heads up and running to the boiler at Frontier, this is just fresh off the press. The good boiler that worked the all good last boiler, winter? The good boiler, number one. Yeah. So remember, boiler number two is down. Yeah. Boiler number two is down and in bad shape. And there's a possibility that it could just take 15000 to fix. And there's a possibility that it could take $450,000 to fix. And it's a, it's, an, it's a massive boiler, 12 million BTUs. Um, so so they so they've been using boiler number one boiler number one went down and boiler number two it's the problem is in the top of it boiler number one the problem is in the bottom of it so we're in and a similar thing so that somebody's it might not cost a lot to fix it and and you know the worst part about all these things the boilers are so big that the to remove them from the building will cost up more than $100,000 because they have to be cut into tiny little pieces. The only in and out around this is just enough for one person to walk like this. The school can survive and without heat? Not in the winter. No, no, I mean. For the summer, for yes. For the spring? and Yes, oh. but this is a potential. It might not be anything. It might be something really horrendous. Um, and we're going to find out as soon as they can. But. Um, <laughs> But you know, it's 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 a potential of many, many hundreds of thousands of dollars. I thought we had a good plan going with yeah, it was the, the temporary boiler fix. number one let us down. We we're depending on number yeah, one. Yeah. Um, so that was just wanted to give you that. And so we are going to adjourn this meeting into an executive session. <clears throat> Um, and we're going to, well, if, if there is a roll call vote in favor of going into an executive session, but if there is, then we, we would be going into executive session for reason, statutory reason number eight, uh, to consider or interview applicants for employment or appointment by, um, if the chair declares that an open meeting would have a detrimental effect in obtaining qualified applicants. Um, so. So I'll, and, I'll and second the, that and motion. And the chair does so declare. I'll second that. So all in favor of going into executive session and adjourning the meeting from executive session. So this is Bob, roll call. Uh, I say an aye. And I say aye. So we are in executive session and we're going to end the recording and then there will be no further public business conducted once we emerge from the executive session. So good night, everybody. See you on Monday next month.